Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the fish room. My name is Travis. Today I'm going to show you how to install the 20 gallon long um, 3D printed baffle kit. Now this is a customer request. They wanted to take a standard dollar per gallon Aquion 20 gallon long tank. You get like Petco and PetSmart. And they wanted to turn it into a peninsula style with the um, filter section and all that stuff kind of in one side of the tank. And of course they did want to keep the rim. Uh, even though the kit is made specifically for the rims, you can remove them if you so choose. I don't personally recommend it, but it will give it a more sleeker look if the rim's not there. But either way, the baffle kit will allow you to uh, remove the media chamber and get access to your pump and your heaters with or without the rim. So just keep that in mind. Now, in this video, we're going to um, show you this, little ins and outs here, and then I'm going to install it with the Aquion silicone. So we're just kind of getting stuff locally for those of you who like the DIY project. So we got the, uh, I got the, actually got this at PetSmart for about $32, or something like that, and this is like 14 bucks at Petco. So um, outside of that, we are using a Jabil pump here. It's about 320 gallons per hour and an automatic 100 watt heater, which basically keeps the tank at 78 degrees. And we're going to be installing one of these like random flow generator things. Now, if I sell this on the website, it's just going to um, bypass this whole situation and you'll be able to use lock lines. So you don't have to worry about trying to find everything that you see here in the video. So with that being said, I'm going to move this out of the way a little bit. We're going to take a closer look at the baffle itself, the ins and outs. Then we're going to turn it up and silicone it in place. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a quick look at the features of the baffle, the ins and outs of it. Now, uh, real quick, when it comes to the output, um, this is going to be different than what you see uh, when you get it. Now, for this particular setup, it's going to be for this variable flow uh, thingamajigger. I still don't remember the name of it. If you do, feel free to let me know. But either way, there's a specific connection for it, and I made the hole that size for that connection. When you get this, it's gonna be set up for the half inch lock line. So you'll be able to put in the lock line I will provide a nut for you to screw it in place. It will go down to a um, elbow where you can connect to your pump, and then you can put whatever, however many sections of lock line you want um, for that, whatever, whatever you want, right? So uh, with that, looking at the front here, we have our overflow teeth. Now the water's gonna flow up, down, into the media box. Now the media box, um, the customer requested it to be somewhat long, um, it's about I don't know, 229 millimeters. I don't know what that is. I, I mean, even though we do inches around here, I work in millimeters in the CAD software. So 229 millimeters, whatever that is to inches. And uh, so it's gonna hold quite a bit of bio media, filter floss, all that kind of stuff. But I also have this little plate that um, will stop in here to put some uh, filter floss or whatever you want, uh, filter media or anything that's gonna catch like mechanical filtration wise. So you can do whatever you want with this, it's up to you. But either way, this slides into place. Now, some, some of the features of this is I have a water block, so it's going to stop the water from splashing over. I know it's a little darkish, wish I had some better light. Um, it's going to stop the water from splashing over. Also, it's going to flow in, and you can easily move it, pick it up and down with this, and you don't have to worry about it. Now, there is a gap here. You might be wondering, that's because the rim of the tank comes over, and I don't want this flopping around. holds it in place easily, and um, yeah, works out pretty good. Now, looking in this section further, it's going to be blocked off here. You don't have to worry about it falling through. And then I added some support to keep everything nice and sturdy. So we have our water's gonna flow down through your media. So come over here, hit this first baffle. Then it's gonna flow up through your heater, your UV sterilizer, whatever you want. Then it's gonna flow down over to your return pump. So it's a very easy, basic uh, setup when it comes to you know just baffle design in general. And that's what we want. We want it to be simple so people can use it and get it set up quickly and move on, right? So that's it. I'm gonna go ahead and start installing it here on the 20 gallon long. I gotta get some alcohol because I like to clean all this up so that the silicone uh, sticks well. And uh, yeah, we're gonna see how it works. When it comes to siliconing this, um, my plan is I'm gonna put silicone here, 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 and here, as well as the bottom and the sides. Now I might wait to put the sides depending on kind of how snug it feels as I put the silicone in and I might just put the silicone on the front. We'll see and uh, we'll just kind of see how it goes. All right, let's go ahead and do that.
Hey, what's up guys? So, it's been 24 hours since we installed and siliconed uh, this baffle for the all-in-one, and overall it turned out pretty good. Uh, the media chamber fits in perfectly fine, removes it, uh, seems relatively sturdy. I don't really see any kind of bending or flexing or any issues. Now, uh, I did learn a lesson when it comes to uh, the order in which I want to uh, silicone this thing, uh, just because with every new project there are, uh, you know, lessons to be learned. And with this one, I figured out that you need to silicone the back and the bottom first basically putting it in sliding it into place um, and then adding your silicone to the front and bottom of the main baffle uh, that just will prevent some silicone from getting smeared which I'll have to get in there before we paint this and clean it up with a razor blade but outside of that uh, a minor lesson to be learned when it comes to it and again with every new project you kind of just figure it out as we go but uh, overall really happy with it um, I'm debating if I want to 3d print a cover for this I haven't decided yet um, I do like it the way it is um, and then of course uh, you know having a cover might just kind of make it look a bit a little bit more smoother and we'll have some holes for the cords but we'll see uh, maybe a little project here in the future but Outside of that, I am uh, happy with it. So what's next? Well, like I said, I gotta get in here and clean up some of the silicone just a little bit. And then I need to paint the bottom, back, right side, and about half to three quarters of the left side. I do like to leave a little bit open here just to visually see how much water is in the return section. Even though I will be having a um, ATO uh, sensor in there, I still like to visually see some of that water, um, just like the build upstairs, and it's good to go. So. Uh, there is a question that I got in the comment section of the short that I put up on this video or on this tank and it was how uh, does the silicone hold up for 3D printing and um, with 3D printing filament I have had zero issues with it the tank upstairs which you guys will see here soon has been up and running for about 10 months and um, I have no issues with it there's even rock pressuring uh, the, the it's a floating rock scape so there's rock sitting on the on the um, 3D printed filament on the wall there so there is pressure on the silicone but I don't see any warp, flexing, bending, no issues at all. It seems to be attached pretty well. And I think, it is, I think it's because the filament um, prints, even though it is smooth, it's not as smooth as acrylic. So we are getting a good grip on it. And of course, attaching it to the glass and there's no problem. So if you are worried about that, I don't think it's anything to be concerned about. Plus it's an all-in-one. So if, you know, for whatever reason, you do get a minor like separation somewhere down the road, several years down the road, it's an all-in-one tank. So you don't really have to worry about it as much as if it was uh, something different. So uh, yeah, with that being said, let's go ahead and start the painting proce process. I am gonna put some tape on here to make it look um, you know, even, and then, uh, yeah, we'll be good to go. We'll test fill it and see how it turned out. Okay, so tank is taped off, we're ready to start painting. When it comes to the paint, it is a flat black Rust-Oleum oil base. Got this at uh, Home Depot, as well as the sponge roller. Now they used to make a can about half the size for half the price, but uh, yeah, they don't have that anymore, at least not at my location. So it's about enough paint for about 35 tanks. Either way, um, yeah, let's go and get started with the painting.
Okay, so let's go ahead and install the return pump. This is gonna be a JBO uh, or JCOD DCS 1200. It's gonna go in this way and we're gonna connect it using the uh, fitting here that goes with this random flow thingamajigger. Now, as I mentioned before, uh, this, um, when it sells, it's gonna have a screw adapter for the lock line that you can purchase on Amazon. And then I'm also gonna give you a, an adapter that will screw onto the back of that and go to your uh, one half inch hose. So, with that, let's go ahead and put this in place. Simple, just gonna connect here. And then we're gonna install this. It's just like a little rubbery adapter. And put that in place, rotate it down. And that is good to go. And then the last thing here is gonna be the media basket. All right, so. That's pretty much it. Um, when it comes to the uh, heater, it is the second section here. Simply just put it in there and suction cup it to the back glass. So we're just not gonna install that for now. Uh, what's next? Let's put it on a level-ish surface and fill this thing up. All right guys, so everything is up and running. You can see that the flow nozzle is moving and doing its thing. Pretty good surface agitation. Now this uh, pump is at 100%. And you can see that the overflow section here is doing pretty good. Uh, still gotta add media and some filter floss and stuff, but you can see that it is doing well. Even the height of the water is still under the rim of the tank. Looks pretty good. There's no overflow or anything too crazy going on there. You're not seeing ripples or anything. I'm sure if you lower down the um, flow, which we can do, we can see exactly how low the water level gets with this particular pump. Give it a second to overflow into the chamber. While we're doing, while we're waiting, you can see the return pump. Yeah, I'm definitely going to paint that. It just looks looks dumb so <laughs> live and learn I suppose um, some builds it looks good this one just it just doesn't so all right so we lowered the, the um, flow and this is the current water level you can see that it's just above the rim you're not gonna get any of that ripple or anything like that it looks pretty clean again the uh, flow nozzle is doing pretty good so outside of just having to um, paint this I really like this build, I really do. So I'm gonna let this run for a few days. I always like to test um, all the tanks that I sell and build for people, because you never know, something could happen to the tank before I got it, and I just wanna make sure that everything is uh, leak proof and working pretty good. So I'm gonna let this run. And uh, yes, I did end up adding these baffles to the website. So as I mentioned before, you'll get the main baffle, the basket, and the adapter for the lock line. You'll just have to purchase lock line, a return pump, a heater, and uh, media if you so choose to put it in the basket. But outside of that, it looks pretty cool. I am going to build another one of these, uh, the exact same setup. Maybe put it down here on this stand. Um, it's not going to be a peninsula style stand unless I get something else, but maybe we'll uh, set something else up. But uh, yeah, turned out pretty good. Let me know what you guys think. If you have any questions or suggestions, feel free to let me know. And uh, I'll see you in the next video. Peace.